Right, we move on to the Old Kent Road uh, area action plan for the third option, item 13. Um, Mark uh, is absent, uh, we have noted, but he has prepared a forward. Um, and uh, I think essentially this is a report which um, sets out our incredible ambition to build 20,000 new homes, create 10,000 new jobs, bring the Baker Garden extension uh, to uh, the Old Camp Road, um, uh, whilst preserving the industry and, and businesses that we have got there. So it's a, a pretty amazing ambition. Colin, can we deliver it? Uh, yes. Good. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it's probably one of the few bits of London where you, where you could deliver that level of ambition. Um, it's uh, something that the New London Plan leads on, so it's something that, that, that the Mayor has picked up on. Um, but I think the, um, the, the demand for industrial and for housing in Old Kent Road um, will make it work, and it will also make, I think, a very compelling business case for the Baker Blue Line extension to central government. Can I, can I just ask this question? Sorry, Steve, um, and you want to pick it up. But, I mean, obviously the, the Mayor's... Um, draft London plan takes affordable housing from 35 up to 50 percent uh, over a couple of years, but 50 percent on sites which are currently in industrial use, um, which is quite ambitious when you're expecting the Bakery Line extension to be paid for as well, as well, as well, as well um, in in Southwark. And, and how is that going to? How are we going to be able to do that? Uh, yeah, the the, um, the mayor's um, published uh, housing supplementary planning guidance. Um, addresses that particular question. Uh, so uh, that, that states that within opportunity areas within London, uh, local authorities working with the GLA and TfL uh, can set um, their own um, rate, if you like, of, of affordable housing uh, based on the, um, the, the other issues and challenges that they're trying to address uh, within those opportunity areas. It does say that, um, that um, within those opportunity areas, the level of affordable housing ambition should be at least 35%. Uh, and it could be higher than that where that's possible. Um, one of the things that, that we've done and, and the team have done is, is check viability of developments in Old Kent Road uh, against um, uh, the, uh, the, the revised community infrastructure levy rate in Old Kent Road, which is r rising from £50 a square metre for residential to £280 per square metre. Uh, and um, that viability evidence shows that with that community infrastructure levy, um, a viable level of affordable housing is 35% where that, that split is 70-30 in terms of social rented and, and intermediate. Uh, so we feel that we are, we, we have followed the advice uh, issued by the Mayor quite recently the supplementary planning guidance on housing uh, and that SPG is, is not surprisingly also consistent with what's in the new London plan. Thanks Colin. And can I just ask one question and then I'll call him uh, uh, Johnson and Richard and it might be on preempting one of your questions but obviously we had a, a deputation at our last council assembly from businesses who are currently in the old camp road who thought they weren't being listened to um, and I think also felt that they were under threat as a consequence of these plans which have always been my understanding they were not under threat, they were an integral part of what we envisage going forward are you able to say anything about that and again kind of give any public reassurance on, those, on, on that point? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, one, of the main one of the main changes uh, to the plan from, from the last consultation uh, has, has been a, a very significant change in emphasis about mixed use, um, and we're calling it uh, uh, laptops to forklifts. So it's not just about office provision in Old Kent Road, it's also about distribution industries. Uh, within the plan we talk about a range of, of um, job densities from higher to lower. Um, part of that is, is serving a London economy. <coughs> Um, part of that is also providing a range of jobs to local people. Uh, and at the moment, um, we're, we're heavily engaged with um, local businesses uh, to determine how, how we can manage that process, uh, both the businesses and the, and the people who they lease those, those sites from. Um, there is a wide variation of, of, of business types in the Old Kent Rose, uh, and what we intend to do over the, over the period of the consultation and over the next year is, is work through in more detail how we can manage um, relocation, reprovision of those those businesses in Old Kent Road. Um, but it would be fair to say that, um, that, that the plan is proposing something um, that hasn't been done at this scale uh, that I'm aware of anywhere else in London um, or anywhere else in the UK. Um, so, so it is, in that sense, a, a very innovative approach to accommodating housing growth and jobs growth. As I said earlier, it's, it's probably one of the few places, uh, probably in the UK 
actually, where you could manage manage that. Um, and, and of course, it also has another benefit in the, that um, as well as growing income um, from council tax, you can also grow income from business rates, um, which is which is very important for funding um, the work that the council does. Could I just emphasise that we've now got a policy requirement for business relocation, so we didn't have that before, so that's quite a, a, a good new thing that should hopefully appease people's worries. Okay, uh, Johnson and Richard. Yeah, um, that was very much the point I wanted to ask as well, so welcome, no, <laughs> uh, so welcome the fact that, and hopefully, as you quite rightly say, that this next consultation period will be able to address some of that as well. I, I also wanted to ask about... Um, I, I believe the, the preferred plan at the moment has mentioned an FB provider, and I just wanted to ask about any early thoughts as to whether that would be a particular uh, sector that it would support, or would it be more wider, and where does that stand from? Uh, thank you for that. That's uh, why I want to come in, because I want to refer back to the previous cabinet discussion around the skill strategy yeah. and say that we're working with Stephen's team about developing a vision for further education down the Old Kent Road. So I don't have the answers today, but hopefully you will see probably the Old Kent Road feature quite heavy in your delivery plan around skills. So, so absolutely based around need. Um, I think our intention is to build it in from day one. Um, we've learnt a lot from Construction Skills Centre, but it won't just be around construction skills. It'll be much broader in terms of the training and the skills offered down the Old Kent Road. I just also want to just make people um, aware that this is an additional round of consultation we're holding um, in relation to the Area Action Plan. Um, I think we've taken on board the comments from the previous round of consultation. It's a lot more pro-business, if you like, much more protection around existing businesses. We've increased the quantum of, if you like, new jobs to be created down the Old Kent Road. It's also much more detailed and specific service, specific proposals around schools, both primary and secondary, specific proposals around roads, parks and other facilities. So it is in effect a master plan for the Old Camp Road to come forward and um, hopefully we have listened to people in the last round of consultation and taken people's concerns on board with this latest proposal. Sorry, and just one final thing to mention. We're also looking to propose to consult on local lettings. So obviously there are going to be proposed 20,000 new homes down the Old Kent Road. 35% um, of those will be affordable. 7,000 new affordable homes, which is a substantial amount of new affordable homes. We're very conscious through the consultation process that existing residents are concerned about access to those new homes um, when they are being built, so we are proposing to effectively consult local rep residents about a local lettings policy which would give them a priority over some of those new homes if they're in housing need, so local people benefit directly from those new homes being delivered down the Old Camp Road. Uh, Richard. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, thank you for, for the work that, that's been done on this, I'm, and certainly I think for those who heard the deputation last uh, Council Assembly, I think some of the movements we made in terms of recognising the needs of local business has been good, and certainly I know as a ward councillor, some of the developments that are coming forward seem to be very much in line with the uh, allowing that, that sort of full truck kind of business as you were talking about being being there and, and having the scope and capacity to do that. I guess there's an important question there though about whilst we can all come up with a plan about what we think works for local businesses and for local communities, none of that is an adequate substitute for talking properly to those local businesses and local communities to get that right. So certainly in terms of business spaces, it'd be useful to hear a little bit more about how we are thinking about taking forward that engagement with local employers and we heard from the vital OKR group that there will be other business interests as well that want to do that and how we make sure that we really are embedding their, their thinking in all of this. And I think in terms of local communities, certainly one of the things that I've picked up probably in the last sort of couple of months being a sort of bigger concern for people is particularly some of the issues around height of buildings. Uh, particularly the, the cluster around Canal Bridge, uh, you know, the, the sort of web PC world and the B and Q is at the moment, and, and the height of some of those buildings. So, how we get that conversation right with the local community that feels if we need to do a bit more work on that. Um, social housing as well, I think, is absolutely critical. We talked about affordable housing, 
but I know the big concern I have in my ward is how affordable is affordable and how we're making sure that we get that 70% of affordable housing being social housing is something that I think is really important and how we get there it, and what reassurance that we can give to local community I think is going to be key to getting local community support for all of this because at the moment I think lots of them just see this as a threat and uh, don't see it as an opportunity to be able to house not only themselves in better conditions but also their families in, in better conditions and creating that, that, that more that greater mass of social housing that we need. Um, so, so comments on those. Oh, and just a final thing. There seems to be in the report itself, rather than the, uh, thankfully, the, the plan, the report itself seems to have a few, a few interesting spelling mistakes, which you might want to double check. I mean, I love the idea of having spent a, uh, a couple of great nights out on Frenchman Street. Uh, I thought it was a great idea having a health facility there, but asking people to go to New Orleans for their health seemed a little extreme. I assume you meant Frenchman Street. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, just make sure we get those details right. Um, on, on the, um, on, on the, on the, the point about business, um, it, it's definitely the intention that uh, work on the plan doesn't stop once you go to consultation. So, so one of the things we will be doing is, is developing in, in more detail how you can come up with viable developments which can viably and affordably um, provide business space uh, and also provide uh, residential accommodation with it. Uh, and also what kind of place you're creating so that um, where you have that, that kind of truck delivery that it's not, it, it's not kind of reducing the quality of the environment you get with the residential. Uh, and a lot of that will be um, about further engagement with business um, <coughs> users, uh, but also people who rent and manage those business spaces. Uh, and there's been a lot of um, engagement already with, with some of the businesses there, but we need to do more of that. So, so, so that will be the intention uh, kind of going forward into the new year. Um, and um, in, in, in terms of uh, tall buildings, um, one of the things we thought it was important to do was to be as clear and transparent as we could about what scale of developments um, looked like uh, in order to uh, deliver the affordable housing um, that, that we think can viably be delivered uh, and also uh, could also put forward a, a credible business case for the Bakerloo line uh, to government and also to TfL. Um, the other thing we try to do with the tall building strategy is, is to stop land speculation uh, in Old Kent Road. <laughs> so one of the things that um, I'm aware of and other people probably are aware of is uh, that there, there is a quite a degree of trading of land in Old Kent Road, uh, perhaps sometimes at values which are unrealistic and that then harms affordable housing delivery. Uh, so one of the things we wanted to try and be clear about was, was how tall in which locations uh, and also to use that as a way to engage with local communities um, so that they, they can express their views about you know, what they do or don't like uh, about what we've set out in the draft in this draft for consultation. Um, but I think it also have, has an important role in, in ensuring that the affordable housing and the business space can also be delivered um, because the mix of uses is, is a challenging thing for developers. Um, it, it's, it, it's not necessarily making their lives easier. Um, and kind of an example of that, I suppose, is, is that, um, for instance, on Mandela Way, um, I'm kind of aware that some housing, large housing developers have been looking up to buy sites there to just do housing schemes, uh, which we would then lose the business, uh, and we then lose the employment opportunities, and, and I think the plan is enabling <coughs> that, that not to be the outcome. And because of that, I think we, we can then deliver the 35% um, the, uh, social housing. Uh, what we are telling developers is that 70% of that 35% should be um, social rent, uh, which goes beyond what the Mayor's Housing SVG requires or the, or the New London Plan requires. Uh, and I think the other advantage is, is that this process is, this development is early enough in its kind of gestation uh, to allow um, us to secure that genuinely affordable housing um, because cause whilst there has been some speculation it hasn't, it's not too late to, to kind of put down a firm policy um, uh, discipline and, and to deliver uh, that affordable housing and the community infrastructure levy payments that will pay for the schools and the, the social infrastructure that, um, that, that Steve uh, was talking about. Uh, and, and finally, on the spelling mistakes, we, we are currently uh, just doing a final proofreading of, of, the, um, of, 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 of the plan just, just, in, just in case um, we've got anything that we missed. Okay, Barry. Thank you, Chair. I, 
I don't know who the PA chance is. Chris Button. I don't know if you had to answer this comment, Julian or Steve. I was contacted by an architect, and I presume maybe other people have been contacted by this architect, who wanted to ask about Gallywall Road, and he, he described it as areas, sub area five. I could only see four sub areas on this particular report. But uh, his his concern was that originally we talked about uh, that that site uh, being a, a mixed use site. Um, he, he worked up some plans for this and he, he seems to be disappointed now that it's only uh, strategically protected industrial land and I just thought that I wanted to ask about that. I don't really know the detail of it but I just wanted to ask on his behalf perhaps and see what you had to say about that. Uh, yeah, and, and we have um, we have we have had a meeting um, with that development architect. Team. There was an exchange of emails today, uh, yesterday about that. Um, and in the um, the original consultation back in 2016, Gally Wall was identified uh, for having some some residential use. Um, but we feel with the um, change in direction um, in the new London plan from the mayor's office, uh, and, and also to address the issues about business and business relocation. Uh, the benefit of keeping Galley Wall as just industrial use gives us, gives us some flexibility and wriggle room in, in implementing the plan to help with relocating businesses. <coughs> so, so some businesses have, have, have said, um, yes, you know, they, they would um, uh, come engage in a, in a mixed use scheme as long as they had somewhere to go temporarily within Old Kent, the Old Kent Road area. So uh, keeping Galley Wall as an industrial uh, use gives you that opportunity to, to kind of move the pieces around around the, um, the, the, the kind of board, as it were. Any other comments? Otherwise, colleagues, but I, the recommendations set out on page 71, 1 to 4, um, uh, to agree the old Kent Road Air Action Plan and other uh, associated bits of work there. Can we agree that? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Great stuff.